Having read the comments attributed to Bishop Adderley, Senator Franklin, and Derek Allen, I must say that I'm even more disturbed by this totally unwarranted and potentially dangerous situation that has been created by the Franklin-inspired strike. What are they really saying to us in today's media? Who is really going to hurt? Are they saying that the lives of Bajans don't matter? Are they saying that the lives of working people and poor people don't matter? Exactly to what lengths will this group go to make a political point? Are you really boasting that you have paralyzed the national vaccination program in the middle of a dangerous and deadly pandemic with new variants looking around? Are you seriously personally satisfied that your actions are preventing your own citizens from getting access to potential life-saving medications when the clear evidence emerging is that this is what protects us against these new variants that are lurking? Is this really what we have come to in Barbados? This is unbelievable. Who is being vaccinated? Is it not regular people like you and I? This is not a test trial in a lab somewhere where you're working on mice. These are real people who, if left without the option of getting these vaccines due to the reckless stance, potentially face a literal death sentence if, God forbid, they catch COVID. This is not mere Motley's belief. These are cold, hard, proven medical facts backed by the empirical evidence right here in Barbados over the past months. Unvaccinated people we have seen for ourselves face the highest risk of serious illness or death when they contract COVID-19. And I ask, why on God's earth would anybody, and especially those goodly gentlemen, see no problem in promoting or supporting actions that imperil lives? Bishop Adderley spoke and made no reference to the well-being of the patients who are at the center of the, our concern. Does he not realize that we're not talking about what is going on in a drinks factory? Is he so afraid of Senator Franklin that he's prepared to abandon reason and common sense? And to what end? I have known what it is, my friends, to ask a senator that I appointed to resign when I was leader of the opposition. I know what it is to hold people accountable to the national conventions and laws that we must protect. What is the motivation of the leader of the opposition? It is the same question that I had to ask when he assumed his position immediately after the last elections. For real, what is it? People at the psychiatric hospital and the geriatric hospital who are unwell and who need this care are being left in the lurch because apparently it is okay for nurses to be told that they should leave them for someone else to deal with as Senator Franklin told them. They were told by him that they're not your problem. And the Boston rights that he wants seem to be more important than the health of an elderly person or a patient. I really wonder what Florence Nightingale would say if she was alive. The current Democratic Labour Party General Secretary Derek Ali now, seeing the void created by the silence of his leader, sees nothing wrong with what is happening, and in fact, has intimated that even if a union is doing foolishness, other trades unions should not intervene and call for good sense to prevail. This is unbelievable. This is not who we are. Their statements reinforce all that I have said. And my view is that this is political actions that are putting at risk our people. It does not conform or resemble any aspect of our industrial relations practice. Are they really prepared to undermine the integrity also of an industrial relations system that is based on clearly established protocols that are globally recognized and respected? Our actions today will determine what is permissible conduct in the management of our industrial relations going forward. And that is why all of the established unions in this country stood united as a social partnership, because they know what was at stake and what is at stake. Who are they really attacking for? And for speaking out and for reminding us what is acceptable international relations conduct. They are seeking to attack the Barbados Workers Union, the Congress of Trade Union and Staff Associations of Barbados, the National Union of Public Workers, the Barbados Nurses Association, the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners. For what? For reminding us what the ILO principles, international labor organization principles are, and those of the International Code of Nurses, Will the ILO and the international nursing bodies be picking sides in Barbados by reinforcing their best practice protocols in international relations as these unions have sought to do? The same ones are being attacked 
in the social partnership for simply standing up for best practice. They all know you cannot set criteria as a trigger for a strike and immediately take that action even though the trigger has not happened. And that you want a strike for your first course of action in an industrial dispute, unheard of. This is Barbados that has a union movement that celebrates 80 years this year, 2021. This is who we are. And when we go to attack the integrity of all who spoke from the union movement and declare that they are being political, when the facts are so clear that even a blind man on a trotting horse can see them. My friends, it is as if they will destroy Barbados in their quest for relevance. We have not had a silly season that puts us this perilously close to the edge, and certainly already in the midst of a pandemic. Patriotism is now to be sacrificed at the altar of their seeking relevance. I repeat, this is not a lab experiment. This is real life and real lives that can be lost. You are stopping the woman from Pike Corner from being vaccinated. But senators are vaccinated. What is wrong with that woman from Pike Corner or from Black Rock or the man from Curtains in St. Philip wanting to be vaccinated? Why were the senators and members of parliament vaccinated? Is it not to save their lives? Why should that grandparent in Pike Corner or the one in Black Rock or the same person in Curtains or in Parish Land not want to be vaccinated, especially now that they know that they may have grandchildren coming home and living with them and who moving about more in the community because it's Christmas time. This goes, my friends, to the core of who we are as a people. And I ask, how can we have persons encouraging the abandonment of patients? And really, for what reasons? And this level of ignorance and folly is not associated with the Barbados that I know. Indeed, I am embarrassed, truly, by their behavior. And they should hang their heads in shame. And it, let us be real. The only person who can pull this back is Caswell Franklin. For there is no action that the government has taken. He is reacting to an action that was not taken by the government. If ever there was a case about jumping the gun, this is it. And at some point, my friends, he will have to stop because no one sent him out there and the things that he is complaining about have not happened. So I ask, why is he punishing the vulnerable and the sick? If you want to take action and take on the government, my brother, find a constituency and run in it and levy, take it on that way, take us on that way. But your fight is not even truly with the government because we know deep down this is an act to boost your membership and to be politically divisive. But let us remember who is at risk and who may die as a result of it. The need vaccines to protect themselves from death and hospitalization and boasting that you have collapsed the program when there is clearly a need for vaccine protection for Delta and Omicron is a most, most unfortunate development. And this is not just politics now, this is ignorance and recklessness. And as I said before, every parliamentarian is vaccinated to the best of my knowledge. If you're not, I don't know. But why is it that all of the rest of us went? The same reason we all went is the same reason the lady would leave Pycorna yesterday to go and get hers. Or the man who went from Parish Land to Randall Phillips yesterday to get a booster only to be told no such luck and boasting about a vaccination program being collapsed. The silence of the leader of the Democratic Labour Party is equally deafening and perplexing. Unless, of course, it is that she endorses all that her general secretary has said. My friends, we are now emerging from a third wave and we're beginning to see a strong path to some level of normalcy. And we don't want to be able to have this recklessness bring serious peril to Barbadians. Why should Bajans be asked to go into Christmas week this week, worried that if they get sick, they might be in trouble? There is no action that the government has done that has brought this about. I repeat, we have not introduced any safe zones yet. We have not introduced mandatory vaccination yet. We have not introduced mandatory testing. So I ask, why are persons striking? And what are they striking for? Is there no more room in this country for right and for wrong and to understand the difference between the two? My advice, no, my prayer 
It's for Senator Franklin to listen to that part of the Bible where it says, go to the ant they sluggard way, consider her ways and be wise. I ask him, and I ask all of the others, Bishop Adley and Derek Allen as well, who are we really hurting as we enter this Christmas week? Is this the Barbados that we now want or are we going to stand up for what we believe to be right and fair and not put ordinary Barbadians at risk?